I'm coming in hot. The NBA is back, and I don't know about you guys, but I am enjoying the restart. It's been four and a half months without basketball, and the guys seem to be eager to get out there. And we as fans, I think we're really enjoying all the basketball that the NBA is providing. However, not lost in all of this is what happened in the Orlando Magic versus the Brooklyn Nets game, where Jonathan Isaac refused to kneel down for the national anthem for the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, some people, I believe many of you guys are asking, why wouldn't Jonathan Isaac kneel down for the Black Lives Matter movement? I'll tell you why. It has to do with Jonathan Isaac's religious belief. You see, something that is not known to many people is that Jonathan Isaac is an ordained minister. Jonathan Isaac is a man that's very driven and impacted by his faith. He is somebody that has helped out tremendously during the COVID-19 situation by donating to schools so that school students could get fed, donating as well to people during this Hurricane Durian uh, that happened and hit Florida. He is a man that is very much for the people and helps the people. In fact, when reporters asked him about does he believe in Black Lives Matter? He said, absolutely, which is not surprising. He is a black man. Why wouldn't a black man want to say that Black Lives Matter? However, there is a difference between the statement of Black Lives Matter and the organization that has the same name. What do I mean by that? Well, the Black Lives Matter organization has certain aspects of it that for somebody that is deeply entrained or, or entrenched in their faith will be very difficult to support. The Black Lives Matter movement has certain things that as Christians, we cannot possibly coincide or agree with. So one thing, for example, is the idea of defunding the police. If we look at the Black Lives Matter movement website, what we can see that they say is, we know that police don't keep us safe, and as long as we continue to pump money into our corrupt criminal justice system at the expense of housing, health, and education investments, we will never be truly safe. Now, at face value, that is something that is partly true, that utter, that we need to take, put invest into other parts of our government, into other parts of our infrastructure. However, we cannot go defunding the police because we do not want to overgeneralize or over stereotype the police. The same way that us as black people oftentimes get stereotyped into being believe into people saying or believing that people of a specific race are worse than other people is the same thing that we oftentimes do to police officers. The truth of the matter is that there are more good cops than there are bad cops. And by defunding the police will not solve the issue of racism. Why do I say this? It's because racism is something that's ingrained in our country and it's ingrained in, in, uh, in, human, in human mind and human thinking. So police officers are, are, re, are reacting to the racism that's already enacted or ingrained into our communities, into our lives. So what we need to do is actually to deconstruct the ideas of racism, but we're not going to help our communities by defunding the police, but actually providing them more strict, better training, Provide them with better facilities and better structures, and also giving them more opportunities to be able to destroy or, or to defunct or to take away their biases. Yes, we know that there are racist cops. They are cops who are guilty or the cops who are doing the wrong thing, but we cannot just generalize and put all the cops in the same basket because of a few rotten apples, the same way that black people cannot be generalized and put in a basket because of people who decide to do the wrong thing. Now, that's the first thing that us as Christians, we cannot actually agree with because we are told and asked to, by the Bible to respect authority and respect the authority of the people who are given authority because God had put them in those places of authority. So that means police officers, the government. That doesn't mean that we cannot enact change through voting and through different demonstrations. However, what it, that does mean is that we are not going to actively undermine those organizations and take away the power and the authority that they were given in the first place. The second thing that 
we as Christians can't actually agree in the, with the Black Lives Matter movement. Is there support for the LGBTQ plus community? Now, when I talk about not supporting the LGBTQ plus community, I do not mean that not having people who are happen to be part of that community, not being friends with them, not working with them. No, that would be actually be homophobia. That would be transphobia. That's what that would be. What I'm saying is that we beloved these people. We love our community. We love who they are, but we cannot pretend that they are not in sin, that their lives are not in sin based off what the Bible tells us. So we love the sinner, but we hate the sin. Same way we recognize that there are other people in the world who are sinning and we still love those people accordingly, but we recognize that they are living a life of sin. So we as Christians, we cannot turn a blind eye to that. So what the Black Lives Matter movement is asking is they're asking for a destruction of traditional family values and traditional family norms. So what I'm talking about is a traditional idea of a of a father figure and a mother figure um, and them and that building a family through that traditional values because what they believe is that this is an old world mindset. However, we as Christians, we know that this is not an old world mindset, but this is something that was ordained by God and that humanity, unfortunately, because of our sinful nature, we are trying to destroy and make unrecognizable. Now, this is a statement straight from the Black Lives Matter homepage where it says, we foster a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking or rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless she or he or they disclose otherwise. So what they're saying is that we need to go and basically destroy the notion or the belief in heterosexual and assuming somebody is actually straight, uh, that we should have an open mind and assume that anybody can be anything. And even though we know that the vast majority of people in the world, roughly about 90% of the world, happens to align themselves as being heterosexual. So the so Black Lives Matter movement or the Black Lives Matter organization wants to affirm or wants to destroy completely the idea of families. And we know that that's a straight attack from the enemy because the enemy always tries to attack the family unit first. He tries to make sure that the families are either destroyed or incomplete because what it happens is it leaves many people in broken homes and many people with an unfilled longing for a father figure or a mother figure. So that is what the Black Lives Matter movement believes in. And because of that, Jonathan Isaac being an ordained minister, he could not have wore the shirt or kneeled down in support of the organization. However, let's be clear, Jonathan Isaac does support black lives because he believes that you can support black lives without supporting the actual organization. So, because the reality is, is that even though the organization is not one that as a Christian we can particularly support, that doesn't make their message on police brutality or their message on the unfairness that black lives and black bodies and Hispanic bodies have faced in this country any less true. So we should be able to differentiate the message from the organization. And I want to end off with a quote that Jonathan Isaac said during his press conference just to show you what he is talking about. I do believe that black lives matter. A lot went into my decision and part of that is my thoughts kneeling or wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt don't go hand in hand with supporting black lives. I believe my life is supported through the gospel, Jesus Christ, and everyone is made in the image of God and that we fall short of God's glory and that each and every one of us, each and every day do things we shouldn't do and say things that we shouldn't say and hate and dislike people we shouldn't hate and dislike. Sometimes it gets to the point where we point fingers about who's evil and is worse, and sometimes it comes out as who's evil is most visible. 
When you look around, racism isn't the only thing that plagues our society, that plagues our nation, that plagues our world. We want to get past not only racism, but everything that plagues our society. I feel like the answer to it is in the gospel. Yes, Jonathan Isaac, the answer is in the gospel. That is the answer to everything that we are struggling with. It is through Jesus, and that's the point you want to make. And the last thing I want to say was that Jonathan Isaac, when he was standing while everybody else was kneeling, they asked him what he was doing. He it wasn't something patriotic. He wasn't just he wasn't saying the national anthem. He was actually praying. And I and just like he was praying, I would like to pray for our country and our world. Father God, we come before you. We thank you for who you are. We believe in that you love your neighbor. You love and you taught us to love our neighbors. You taught us to love everybody in the world, that everybody in the world is our neighbor, Jesus. Allow us, Jesus, to be able to support every person, Father God, those who are grieving, those who, those who have been hurting, Father God, the, the black community, Father God, the Hispanic community, all the communities in the world, that we may support them in their times of need, Father God, that we may be able to be honest and have conversation, Father God, about what is important, Father God, and what is the answer to all of our problems, and that is you. When we turn and we reflect you, Jesus, when we make our lives all about you, you are able to solve all the problems within us, Father God, and around us. So in your name we pray. I pray that this nation may turn to you once again. Amen and amen. This has been Jonathan from Rise Ministries. God bless you guys, and stay safe.